Hey, Adam. Hey, Adam. Where's Adam? Oh, I forgot. Hold on a second. I got a text message. Dear Peter, this is Adam. I'm texting you. I'm in Disney World and will not be there all week for you'll hear it. You're on, you're on your own, but don't worry, you'll hear it. I'm Peter Martin, and that's it for today. Adam is on vacation this week, um, so I'm coming to you from the piano, not from the pod cave over there. I'll be back there later in the week, uh, but this is the You'll Hear It uh, podcast. This is my first time ever doing this on my own. Adam did it a little bit on his own, uh, I believe a few weeks ago when I was out of town, so this is a fun uh, kind of change. Um, we're in 2019, so happy 2019. We're on, what are we on, season three now, Andrew? Se we're season three. They said it would last, and we forced it. We foisted it, and now we're forcing it upon you. Um, so we want to welcome you. We want to welcome all of our new listeners to the You'll Hear podcast, of which we have many. Um, and today's episode is a question. So let's read that. This is about comping patterns. Hey, Open Studio. This is from um, Corey. Hey, Open Studio, can you show us some comping patterns? patterns like you did on the rhythmic syncopation two-minute jazz lesson, but for faster swingers like What a Little Moonlight Can Do. Love the episodes at the piano, exclamation point, exclamation point. Uh, you're welcome. I'm back at the piano. Um, thanks. This is my second question, Peter and Adam, and you two are both stars. I was going to say you're getting a little greedy with the second question, but then you said you two both are stars, so you redeemed yourself. Uh, so this is actually from Mark and Colt Corey in Glastonbury, um, UK. I believe, Scotland, England. Um, all right, great. So the question is about comping patterns. First of all, comping patterns, and look, we're talking about mostly for pianists here, a little bit for guitarists, but this is important for every jazz musician to know and to understand. So if you're not a pianist, do not tune off and, and, and turn this off. I'm gonna tell you why. Well, first of all, comping patterns, that stands for accompanying patterns. For those of you that aren't versed with the, with the uh, word comping, and that's one of those terms, every time I try to text it, I get auto-corrected or told that it's not a real word. But we know, as jazz musicians, you'll hear it, it is a real word. Um, but basically, we're talking about the different rhythmic um, patterns that we use when we're accompanying uh, normally like horn player, singer, drummer, bass player, whatever, at the piano. And it's such a big part of what our job is. We want to really be well-versed in this. Um, and I think that, you know, there's so many great ideas and, and you know, every pianist does, does this differently. And the wonderful thing about this is you can have fresh ideas every day by listening to the recordings that you enjoy. And the trick is like, how do you apply that to real world situations? But that gives you an idea sort of of the repertoire, the same way you listen to great soloists um, for different melodic and, and solo ideas. You still have to tell your story and we have to tell our own story, which is what we want to do, but we can kind of use some of these elements. So the other part of the question was kind of asking about over fast swingers, what a little moonlight can do. Um, so, you know, the, the rhythmic concept is the same, I think, at any tempo when you're in swing. If you're here, a one, two, three, four. If you're one, two, one, two, three, four. Um, or if you're here, one, two, three, four. And one thing that you can do as a pianist. And let me just say, for, for, for non-pianists, the reason this is so important um, for you to understand this too is because the more you understand what the roles of the other musicians in the jazz setup around you, for instance, if you're a horn player, you want to understand the role of the piano, the drums and the bass, the rhythm section, guitar, 
Um, because when you're soloing, they're going to usually be playing with you. If you're playing a duo as a trumpet player with the piano, the piano is going to be functioning as most of the rhythm section most of the time. So the more you understand about what he or she does at the instrument, how these comping techniques work, you don't necessarily have to be able to play them all. That's sort of bonus, right? But you do want to be able to, you know, kind of understand what's happening so that you can interact with them, know what's possible, and then play off of that. You know, use those kind of things to your advantage. So you might not be playing these exact rhythms, but you're gonna be fitting in around them. And sometimes you are gonna be playing with them. So that's why it's very valuable. Now, as far as the comping at the faster tempos, the best way to practice comping at faster tempos, I believe, is by comping at slower tempos. Because that's when you really instill that precision. If we do, um, So we're on um, What a Little Moonlight. Let's see, what are the changes to this again? Let me remember. Oh, yeah, it's kind of like stagnant around the one, then it goes to the four. Okay, so we've got a long time over this B flat major tonic, right? So if I'm playing one, two, one, two, three, four. It can seem like it's really hip what I'm playing um, and that it's working, especially when I'm, you don't hear the bass and the drums like now. But when you slow things down, that's where you really hear if you're right in the cut, if you're right in that rhythmic precision. And then that's the same thing that you're going to take with you when you go up to the faster tempo. So if I'm like one, two, three, four. I'm just going to give a little bass line so we have some reference point. So like if I do something like that, like, like a little triplet feel, one, two, three, four. And then come back, there there's, should be a precision there, bang, where I come back to the eighth note feel with the syncopation, right? So this is eighth note, little triplet. triplet and then the eighth note because the whole thing with comping rhythmic patterns at this tempo and then especially as we move faster is setting up interesting syncopations like that's what the pattern basically is based upon you know there's a lot of things we can do where we're kind of getting melodic and stuff within um, our improv, but right now we're really just talking about the rhythmic standpoint. So for syncopation, it's not just a matter of playing on the upbeats. One, two, three, four. Uh. That's cool, but it's not really syncopated. It's just playing upbeats. It has to resolve or have some drama at some point. And so it's that traveling back and forth from the up to the down, and, and we're not even talking about triplets now yet. The, um, we're just talking about eighth notes up and down. So syncopation is the resolution and the dramatization of that juxtaposition of um, upbeat and downbeat. All right. And I just want to put it out there. Has Adam ever used juxtaposition, syncopation, and what was the other fancy word I used, Andrew? Juxtaposition, syncopation, and dramatization, that was three in one sense, okay? I'm just saying, he's not here to defend himself, but I just, just wanted to put that out there. But that's what it's really about, like that's the foundation, and this is easier to understand, to play, to practice at the slower tempos. You kinda will get it built in, if you do it enough and listen, you'll hear it um, at these slower tempos, so that when you speed it up, one, two, one, two, three. <laughs> you're just kind of holding on for dear life at that point, right? So at the slower tempo, you can start to really feel it, think about it, actually kind of plan out when you're gonna hit the down and the up, right? One, two, three, four, up, 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 down, up, 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 down, up, down and up, triplet, okay? So that's pretty much what the foundation of it is. 
I'm gonna have a little bit of my snacks that have been provided. Even though we're not in a pod cave, I've got my trail mix, healthy, plant-based, 2019, more on that later. When Adam gets back, a little bit of snacks here. But that's the trick for comping patterns. Think about resolving from the upbeat to the downbeat, throwing in some triplets, practice slowly, practice medium, listen to the recordings, and then you'll do well. Um, we wanna give a big shout out to everybody who's been watching on YouTube. We're very excited. Our YouTube channel is blowing up, you know what I'm saying? So leave us some comments there. Um, I'm gonna have some fun this week by myself and hope everybody's having a great 2019 so far. Um, how do we end things usually? Oh yeah, you'll hear it. <laughs>